Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Our special guest today has a new approach to reverse applique with wool felt. She creates beautiful garments and accessories on the long arm machine. We can't wait to show you some of the quilts entered in a recent contest. Contestants created four seasonal quilts made to be interchangeable and button on to a single fabric frame. Our quick quilt feature today is a pillowcase with a quilted border, so stay tuned. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Joining us today is a celebrity long arm teacher, Laura Lee Fritz, and she has done over 15,000 quilts on a long arm. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, Janie. This is such an honor to be here. I've been quilting and doing hand applique garments since I was 16 years old, making my living since then, going from hand applique big bold images to small delicate quilts, and now I'm doing a lot of narrative stories just with the thread line. So now you would say you're doing narrative art. Narrative I, can't, I can't get away from telling stories. <laughs> Let's see some of your work. This is a hand applique, hand embroidered, hand quilted sample of a piece that I had in my first book published by the American Quilter Society. And this piece is a baseball player from one of my favorite teams. It's very beautiful and the detail on it is so fine. It's just wonderful. Coming from that tradition of very fine handwork, I'm one of the few quilters who insists on tying off all my thread ends and burying them in. I don't do any back tacking. Oh, yeah, you can tell the detail and the perfection is there. My work for years was just very folk art, self-taught, and after probably three or four years of doing this folk art on jackets and overshirts that I sold, I decided I really wanted a more refined look to my work, so I studied some art classes at college for two years. Oh, well, it certainly did pay off. And all those years of practice. My customers have been very generous about letting me practice my, my freewheeling free-handing, um, just simple drawing, doodling on their so quilts. it just comes out of your soul onto your work. It gets to now. It's very much automatic to just sit down and draw. It's, and you have a special technique that you do, or you have evolved to lately. Oh, I discovered the wool felt. I've always known it was available somewhere deep in my dreams. And this allows me to get back to the clean, bold lines on garments that... Um, is more of an immediate gratification for me since I don't have to turn edges and hand stitch these delicate little appliques. Because it can all be raw edge, but it won't, it won't fray or... It doesn't unreal. fray. When you wash, this is wool felt, and when you wash it, it rumples up. And that's this wonderful te texture that I love so much. Mm -hmm. This is a two-layer piece. This is a pouch that's made with three layers. So you are actually layering it, and then you quilt your design and you cut away. I cut and then wash it. How many layers can you actually use of that at one time? Of the felt, I find that three layers is really my maximum. If I get a fourth layer in there, I can quilt for a little while and it just grabs the needle right out of my machine. Okay, so really you don't need to um, put batting in at all? No, I don't need to use batting here. However, 
when I start uh, using my own fleece, I raise sheep and alpacas, and I'm going to start using my fleece as the middle layer here. Oh. So I'll have little fringy hairs in here. Oh, Some of my projects. Interesting. I also do quilting on jackets with just one layer of fabric, without batting and without lining. Well, I want to know how to do this, because for those of us that don't have this just coming out of our soul, we need to know how to copy this work. Can you show us? I certainly can. One of my main favorite design tools is this dissolvable stabilizer. When I draw on it, I can use a felt pen and go right over my book. It won't, tra it won't bleed through into the book. And then when I'm done with a whole cloth piece, I can throw it in the washing machine and it just washes all just away. It washes right out. It's also simple enough to rip carefully away from the edges of the stitching. And then if there's any little particles that stay underneath the stitches, they just wash out with just a drop of water on my finger. Oh. That's wonderful. Let me show you how I use that. I brought a few of my drawings here. And from this set of drawings, I've traced off onto my dissolve the great big ocean liner. And from this pattern, I've taken the idea of my whale and the sharks. I'm going to trace the whale for you so you can see how this works. When I work on a white fabric, I try to be sure to use a washable marker, and it's really smart to sample it first for washability. Some of the brands, the reds won't completely wash out. Okay, so you should just use a water-soluble one so you're sure to get it out if it's a light fabric. Well, it's only on those most delicate white ones that are silk, and you know that it you have a special thing. It doesn't come through. That's really nice. Okay. If you keep that in a Ziploc bag, it'll stay supple forever. Oh, wonderful. Would you like to see how I sew Thank this? You. Yes, I would. I like to pin the medium on with uh, enough pins to keep it from shifting. And it's strong enough to not to break up while I sew. One of the secrets to my working is that I, I just work with a very light touch. All these machines just are so well balanced. That's incredible. Really have a knack for continuous line design just to follow the shape of whatever it is. It's not important to me to stay married exactly on the line. The line is there as a guideline for me to make this particular shape in this particular place. But I always override any, draw, any drawn line so that I can make sure to get a real smooth image. Now I'm going to break away from that pattern and make a little shark over here. I have to duck down here. I always work with my machine table set up a lot higher. That is beautiful. A lot of practice really goes a long way to getting a very fluid, very personalized style with the artwork. Just and have a few a, more clouds here. You just have the knack for filling in an area with whatever. With a little bit of a flow, story. and it just has so much motion to it. Clouds and water. My secret it's to beautiful. the clouds is to draw them as if I'm drawing around great big coins. Keep them very round and voluptuous. I think we're done with the machine. Okay. The next thing that I have to do with this is to cut it out. I've got a piece already started so I can show you how to cut. Okay. Let's see that. It's important for me to use a blunt pair of scissors because I want to cut one layer, but I don't want to cut through the final layer. I love that. When I quilted this jacket, I quilted it as two whole rectangles of fabric. And I've just cut away the underarm areas. And here's the neckline. It's absolutely gorgeous. So elegant. The lines are so smooth and have so much flow to them. When I cut this, I don't have to be highly precise about cutting an exact edge. I like to keep the flap of fabric outside my sewing line to about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. But after I wash it, it'll ruffle up and it'll be very oh, kind of textural, and you'll never see whether the exact edge was rough or smooth. So, so you don't even use a, a pointed scissors, you just use a round school mm -hmm. scissors. When I want to begin with an area where I want to cut, I'll pull the two layers apart and make a side snip. 
so I can get an entry point and then just do a simple free cutting. This is an instant gratification for me. Oh my goodness. So much faster than sewing. how you started out with the hand applique and all the little tiny stitches. When I'm working on three layers, Janie, I can make a reversible quilt exquisite by cutting the top layer down to the middle, and then from the other side I can cut from the back layer to the middle. Oh, so it's reversible. Yes. Oh, and I suppose your garments then go together easy, like um, the one you have has kind of a bat wing to it, so there's Oh, it's one. very wearable. I like to design my jacket so that when I raise my arm, I don't lift the entire jacket with me. When I'm finished with the cutting, the next step is to soak it in hot water for about five minutes, spin the water out in the, dry in the washing machine, and then put it in the dryer with a big towel and let it fluff up. When it's completely dry, then it's all shrunk. I have to allow for about 15% shrinkage with this material. Oh. And then when I'm done, I take a very long embroidery needle and I thread on a top stitching thread and I just do a row of running stitches along my edges. And in fact, that's how I sew my seams together too. I will, butt, hand. I will butt the edges up and cut one layer of one side away by a half an inch. I will butt that up against these two edges. This top layer overlaps by a half inch. Oh, and I will do a row of running cover. stitches down here. Let's see if we can get this out here a little bit more for the camera to see. She cuts away the underneath layer in a half an inch. Yes. And then she butts that up to the black underneath on the other side of the sleeve. And that allows for the top layer to overlap the half an inch and she can stitch it down and that will give her an outside steam seam but she can use a decorative stitch or hand quilting stitch to go down there. I like the simplicity of the running stitch on the inside to make sure it's well secured I'll do a whip stitch. Oh, Your garments are absolutely fabulous. I hope you'll make me one someday. <laughs> well I'd love to see one on you. Shall we try some on? Sometime we will. These are just beautiful and so elegant. The color of this, I just love it too. The, the periwinkle is a real popular color these days. And I thank you so much for showing, you, showing us your technique because there is no one else like you, Laura. Thank you very much. Everybody loves a contest, and everybody likes to find out the results. And my guest today is going to share the results from a contest with us. Joining me is Ellie Joes. Welcome, Ellie. Thanks, Don. It's nice to be here, and it's so nice to show our viewers these wonderful quilts that were entered into a Button It On quilt contest that was recently sponsored by some of the leading manufacturers in the quilt market. And in fact, some of them may even be watching us today. Well, good. <laughs> what is Button It On? Well, the the contestants were challenged to make a quilt panel in which the center panel was a button-on panel that represented one of the four seasons. Oh, okay. Spring, summer, fall, or winter. So then as the season changed, they can take that panel off and replace it with the next season. And these are some of the entries yes, that you brought. Yes, these are some of the today. entries, and they all have a different uh, style to them. So we wanted to show just a little bit uh, different techniques that were used. Okay. Now this one, this quilt was made by Dolores Coleman, and she uh -huh. calls this spring maypole. And when I spoke to 
to Dolores, she told me that she really likes to incorporate whimsy in uh -huh. her techniques. And I think she captured it here with the ribbon streaming oh, yes. down and the little beads that look like dew drops and her little fairy in the corner. The scissors down there in yes. the basket. And then she did button it on to the back well, that's interesting. of the quilt. And I love the way she incorporated these very pretty little buttons here in the corner as little um, clusters of, mm -hmm. of buttons here. And I just think it's just a very charming quite nice. um, quilt. And she also likes old-fashioned looks. So she did some trapunto in here to oh, give it an old-fashioned look. Good. So that is... And this one looks like fun. Oh, this one is lovely. And this was an interesting quilt, um, an interesting story. This was from Crystal Dennis. Uh-huh. And she said she was inspired by a Japanese painting called Great Wave at Kanagawa. Uh-huh. And she calls hers Hokusai Nor'easter. Oh, <laughs> I perfect. think I got that correct. <laughs> that's the big Crystal. wave coming up there. <laughs> yes, that's the big wave. And you see the boat here. Yep. But what she did here was she shredded the fabric to oh, look like the fun. foam. And she used the buttons to create the bubbles in the sea. What a good idea. And yes, and then she actually did use the buttons to button it on on the front. And the whole idea of this is you can make this background fabric and then change it for the season. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. So you I have this. You have something that's pretty permanent up there, but then it does change for yep. the season. And now, this one has lots of color. Isn't this beautiful? I love the the work in here too because um, uh, this is Carla Vernon, and this is called Fractured Rainbow. Uh -huh. And Carla used a lot of embroidery stitches oh, here. Yes. She was trying all kinds of stitches from her new machine, she told me. And I love the way she also used the buttons around the edges here and some buttons in the corners, and it's just very colorful and just um, lots of interesting thread techniques. And this is clever, the way she did the variegated, you know, she pieced all of those strips together. That's right, to in the binding. To put her bias binding on, which is really perfect because it ties in nicely with that. Mm -hmm. And this one I understand coming up well, is the grand prize winner. This is the grand prize winner. Oh. This is Susan Jones, and this is called Winterberries. Oh, it's so lovely. And I just loved Susan's story behind this quilt. She lives in Phoenix, but uh -huh. she loves the Four Seasons. So she really wanted to capture um, something that was more winter in yes, feeling because yes. she loves winter and she did winter berries and she said she used several hundred buttons to create oh, her berries goodness. here but the other interesting thing about this was she made this quilt right after she had broken a thumb uh -huh. and her physical ter therapist told her this would be good therapy to sew on oh, all these no. buttons. That's so, a lot of buttons to I have know. to sew on. Isn't that great? But she, when I spoke to Susan she said she loves um, this French Wall look, yes. and that's the beautiful black background here. What's well, interesting, the variation of the fabrics, this kind of autumny look, then mm -hmm. with the very graphic look there, and the traditional, she mixed yeah. and matched a lot of exciting she fabrics. Did. She did, and I love the way she did the branches, yes. too. This was cut on the bias, and it just has this nice little rough edge, which gives another dimension. Great. Well, thank you for joining me today, Ellie, and sharing all these oh, winners. Oh, I'm delighted. Great. <laughs> Today we're going to share some ideas to spruce up the bedroom. Joining me is our sewing expert, Maddie Bushman. Welcome, Maddie. Oh, thank you so much for having me back. I am so delighted to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. What are we going to work on today? Today we're going to be working on a pillowcase, uh -huh. but what we're going to be using is lace and how lace incorporated into a quilt square changes the entire look of the project. It certainly does. This really, I'm sure any young girl would love to have this in her bedroom. It's a very special look pillowcase. Yes, it's from my princess bedroom uh -huh. at my house. I have the entire room done in pinks and laces and it really is so beautiful. Great. Well, show us how you do this one. Let me give you a head start on this. This square here, mm -hmm. as you can see, has a solid, a lace, and a print. Right. Okay, what we do is we will cut 
So our strips, depending on what size you want, this mm -hmm. is four inches. We're going to take right sides together of our print yes. and our solid and sandwiched in between, we will have our lace. Good. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and sew this using a quarter inch seam All allowance. Right. Okay. So we put on our quarter inch foot and then we're going to change the stitch length to 1.8 which you know quilters love. Yes, yes. And we're going to sew these together, as you can see. And once again, we want to make sure that we establish our memory needle down position. Uh huh. And go ahead and sew this. Of course, we're going to move on because we have sewn it. We've already cheated and done it already, right? right? Because <laughs> we want to make sure that everybody gets a look at yes. how much fun this is. Then we're going to take our ruler and we're going to, just for the fun of it, this time let's make it four and a half inch square. Does that sound like fun? That sounds perfect. And cut down there and it's always awkward that backwards angle. Oops. I know. It's just one of those things because, you know, when you're at home working in your own environment, you're standing and everything yes. else is so easy. Wait till you see this. This is sensational. So when you open oh, it, look at that. Right. Now say you didn't like it that way. You could always oh, flip the lace. the lace the other way. Uh-huh. And then you Ooh, would press it that way. That's cool. I like it that way. Don't you? Isn't yes. that wonderful? And you know, there's so many other things that you can do as well. You could use sparkle organza mm -hmm. if you like. This is lace by the yeah. yard. You could also use lace trim. Okay. Well, let's show them about the la using the lace trim then. Okay. Here's a, a small example of one of the ways that I did it with the lace trim, but let's show you how this is done. Okay. All right. We're going to put our lace trim on the long sides of the raw edges, right. right sides together, we're going to put our print fabric and we're going to line them up. Uh -huh. Now, when you were home, you would definitely do this using pins. Okay. All right, but just for demonstration purposes right now, we're just going to go ahead and put it together. Of course, I've gotten so, and I'm sure you have too, that you can almost sew most of the time without pins. Well, I, I can many times, but you're right. It is, some, particularly with patchwork, you want to be so accurate. This isn't quite as uh, crucial on this particular piece. Right, and then you're going to turn it over because remember, you always want to sew in the same direction. Okay. You don't want to have distortion up. of the squares. And we also would then uh, press as seams as sewn. Okay. We want to always press them to set the seam. Again, our quarter inch seam allowance. And we only need to sew just enough so that we can cut. And in this case, I think that we're just going to cut a little bit smaller square so that we can give everybody a, a look at how Good. nice this turns out. And now this is a really easy project, it don't sure you think? It sure is. So far it's easy. I'm going to move this back out there so okay. we have that. And we're going to turn this over. We're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and it, you know, just for demonstration purposes, we're just going to go ahead and cut a little bit smaller All right. square this time just so that everybody can get a good look at this. And let's set this aside, excuse me for a second. Now, look at how pretty it looks with the lace oh, on this side. Isn't that great? But wait, that's not all. Now look at it on that side. Oh my, that is great. Now you used it here. Well, you actually used two prints together this time when you did it. Yes, I did. And so then once you complete these squares, all you're basically doing is sewing four squares together. And if you wanted to make a full-size pillow, you could sew as many as you need to combine them all together. Exactly right. And because the lace is curved in a lot of instances, uh -huh. it's very forgiving for lining up your seams. Right. So it works really well. Well, these are great ideas, and I know that making pillowcases can do so much to spruce up a room from season to season or for any occasions. Oh, you're absolutely right, and well, it looks so nice on the does. pillow. It does. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed the variety of contestants quilts that Ellie brought for us. I think they did some great things, and I loved Laura Lee Fritz's oh. approach to the wool felt. Yes.
Thank you for watching today. Be sure to join us next time on Quilt Central where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free at 1-866-PADUCA.